Hi Year 11 and welcome to our topic on plane geometry. This is lesson one and basically this lesson we're going to do a little bit of revision about where we've come from in terms of year 10. So this topic is chapter four in your textbook and it involves uh, the foundational work for everything else that we're going to do uh, towards our HSC. Okay, so you can see the contents page there. It's a good idea for you to fill out the brainstorm before you come back uh, to school. Uh, so if we're thinking about our learning goal for this section, then we're just looking to kind of revise and apply the meaning of diagrams, notions, uh, terminology, and kind of just basically how to work out missing angles and stuff like that. So if you think about what you already know about plane geometry, um, in this topic, we're basically covering the notation that you've learned before. So for example, very basic things like a point is called would be called B. An interval is a part of a line, in this case AB. Uh, if there's two parallel lines, we write them like this in this notation. Uh, we can name angles in different ways. So you can see that here. Uh, this one you might not be familiar with, so make sure you read through that. These are just out of your textbook, by the way. Uh, how to name triangles, how we name quadrilaterals, how we produce in lines. Uh, what it means to bisect an angle, so cutting an angle in half. Uh, what a median is, this one's often overlooked, so it's really, really important that you know what this word median means. And it basically is talking about uh, the line that cuts this line here, AM, that cuts BC in half. Uh, AP is an altitude, another word that you may not know, an altitude is just a line uh, from the highest point of the uh, shape to the bottom, but it's perpendicular. Okay, your different types of angles, so you need to revise those. So I'm not going to go through them now just for time's sake, but you can read through those. You should know all of them anyway. I will quickly go through this proof with you. So vertically opposite angles, we know that they can be any two vertical uh, angles that are equal to each other opposite and they can actually be horizontal as well but we just still call them vertically opposite angles we know they're equal so if you have a look in this picture uh, basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to uh, let angle AEC be X so that's this one here we're then going to let angle AED so that's this one here be 180 degrees minus X um, and basically angle DEB, so this one in here, uh, that is going to be 180 degrees minus what we just had there, 180 minus X, uh, basically because those are angles on a straight line. And if you have a look further down here at the proof, then we know that that equals to x because they're, they are vertically opposite angles. So this angle here is vertically opposite with this angle here. That is, angle DEB is equal to and vertically opposite with angle AEC. So that's kind of the proof. Similarly, CEB, uh, so CEB here, this line is also 100, this angle, sorry, is also 180 degrees minus x, and you come to the same, same conclusion. Uh, because they're all straight angles and basically they're all equal so that's a proof that vertical opposite angles are equal and that's probably a good one for you to know okay so what we're going to do now is a couple of examples looking at how to find missing pronumals with reasons the reasoning is probably the most important part in geometry uh, and it's important that you don't make any abbreviations okay so i'm going to take you through some of these and then uh, we'll be finished up for this first lesson so the uh, question says find the value of the pronumals in the diagrams giving reason. So in this first one here, I can write down that 3 lots of 2t is equal to 90 degrees. And the reason why I can write that is because basically um, adjacent complementary angles. Then you would have 6t is equal to 90 degrees. Okay, you're going to then divide both sides by 6. They will cancel. And t 
is going to be equal to 15 degrees. So it's really important that you're writing your reason of why you did something in brackets. And that's kind of really, really important. Fantastic. In question B, they are asking you to work out X and Y. So the starting point for this would be to write down that 2X plus 3X is equal to 180 degrees. And the reason I can say that is because this is on a straight line. So my reasoning for that would be adjacent uh, supplementary angles. And that just means angles on a straight line add to 180. And you can write that if you prefer. I just prefer to write down less words. So that's what I do. So I'm solving this equation. And I'm dividing 180 by 5 on both sides, which gives me x as 36 degrees. Now once I've got x as 30 degrees, I can therefore say that y is equal to 3 lots of 36 degrees. Because it's 3x, this uh, little angle up here, these two here are vertically opposite angles. And that's what I'll be writing down. So I'll be writing in a bracket as my reason, vertically opposite angles. Are equal and it's important that you write that out in full with no abbreviations so y is 3 lots of 36 uh, which happens to be 108 degrees okay so that's question B so hopefully by now you're getting the idea you're showing clear working steps going down the page and you're showing your reasoning in brackets next to the kind of first line of working that you do Okay, so for example, C here, again, we are asked to find P and Q as pronumerals. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to look and notice this angle here, uh, which tells me that Q plus 32 is equal to 180. about that and the reason why I can say that q plus 32 equals 180 is because again they're adjacent supplementary angles in other words they are angles on a straight line that add to 180 so in this instance q is equal to 148 degrees okay now, what I also know is that uh, Q is actually vertically opposite with the angle P plus 3P. So that's the next thing I'd be writing. So I'd be writing P plus 3P is equal to 148 degrees. And of course, my reasoning for that, which I'll just write up here, is vertically opposite angles. Are equal. So you've got to kind of always write out your reasoning. And in this case, 4p is 148, and you're using algebra to solve. So we're going to divide both sides by 4 to get p, and p is equal to 37 degrees. Okay, so that was final example C. Okay, in question 2, we are asked to write down what additional information it's required to find the value of x. So in this shape here, we're not given much information in uh, A, B, C, D. It looks like it could be a parallelogram, but we simply don't know. So in this case, we would actually need to be given, say, parallel lines. Because without that, we really don't have enough information. Uh, we would also need to be given angle A, B, D. And the reason for that is, if I was given angle ABD, which is this one here, I could then prove the lines were parallel by using these alternate angles here. Uh, but as is, I don't have enough information. And the second one, I would need to be given angle BAD. So either this whole angle here, 
are all, I would need to be given angle BCA. So that's this one I'm here marking as a, a cross uh, and angle BDA. And the reason that is, is because to work out X, I just don't have enough information. I need to be given BCA, in which case I could use this 90 degree angle and that to work out this little one in here angle BAC and then work out X from there um, or I'd be need to be given angle BAD which would help me get X also because I could use this 90 degree angle to help me. Alright the next question we're looking at is basically asking me to prove something so one of those more kind of reasoning type questions the question is to prove that A, B and C, D are straight lines okay so this is actually an example from your textbook so you can look it up if you like but basically the first step is to go and uh, think about this here. So if I look at this, uh, the angles, you'll notice they're at a point. So I can actually write down that they're all equal to 360. So just adding them all up. And my reason is that they're an angle of revolution. The next bit then is to collect all the like terms. And then I'm going to be solving this for x. So I get 14x is 280, divide both sides by 14. And I get x is equal to 20. Okay, from that point on, angle AEC. So where is that? That's this angle here. Angle AEC, 5x plus 30. That is equal to 50 degrees or 20 plus 30 degrees because I'm substituting the value of x. Substitute the value of x in angle DEB and I also get 50 degrees because they're both equal. Uh, they're vertically opposite angles because they're straight lines. Okay. The last two bits in this section uh, are looking at some definitions. So we want to be able to write down the definition of the word complement. Complement simply means. Uh, basically the angle that's needed to make a total of 90 degrees okay so what we'll write down is uh, the remaining amount so we're going to write down the remaining amount that adds to 90 degrees. So for example, uh, if you were given 60 degrees, the complement would be 30 degrees, okay? Uh, supplement is pretty much the same thing except we're talking about supplementary angles that add to eight, uh, 180 degrees. So supplement means the remaining amount that adds to 180 degrees so for example we could have 150 degrees given and the supplement would be 30 degrees okay fantastic so you need to now write down uh, your summary points of what you learned or revise in that section and then you also need to have a go at exercise 4.1 and you can choose which level you do but that does need to be done and marked by the time you get back to school thanks guys that's the end of geometry lesson one